Welcome to the second video on unexploitable shoving. In video 1 I demonstrated the software's unexploitable shoving tool and discussed the algorithm behind it. In this video, in order to explore the theoretical aspects of unexploitable shoving further, we'll be looking at a simplified example where we can actually derive the exact equilibrium so that we can gain insight into what that looks like. After that, we'll compare that result with the results from the software's unexploitable shoving tool. Now let me just get a picture here. Currently, there are strong indications that in the true mathematical answer to any unexploitable shove or fold spot, Hero will have to shove hands either 0% of the time or 100% of the time. However, most of these illusions will also have one hand that shoved only a percentage of the time. For more on that, please see the article that's linked to in the description of this video. Now, I would like to start off by exploring for ourselves what an unexploitable shoving equilibrium will look like. For that, I have created the tree that's on the screen right now. Small blind holds either aces or 7-6 suited, and big blind holds kings. There's $100 in the pot, and both players have $100 left in front of them. Rake is set at 0%. You may notice that this tree actually makes no sense, since small blind and big blind both check before small blind gets the shove. I've slightly cheated here in order to get to this spot, since I wanted to keep ranges and calculations as basic as possible. Now in our optimal solution, I think it's pretty obvious that we'll always be shoving aces, and we'll only shove 7-6 suited some percentage of the time. The question here is, what percentage will this turn out to be, and does something special happen at the true equilibrium point? In order to explore that, I've written a script, and let me just open that. That lets us shove 7-6 suited from 0% up to 100%, after Viren reacts by either calling or folding with his kings, whichever is better. First, we'll attach variable number 1 to 7-6 suited's weight. To do that, select weight 1 by left-clicking it, now right-click it and attach variable 1 to it. And now click on 7-6 suited. We'll also set the checkpoint here to measure a small blinds shove or fold EV. And also one here to manipulate villain's calling range. I'll just briefly go over the script, but if you want to know more about how to write scripts, I'd like to refer you to the script section of the videos. At the start of the script, we initialize variable 1 at 0, so that we're never shoving 7-6 suited. In line 2, we change the condition at script checkpoint 2 to all hands, so that Villain always calls. Then we compute the EV, after which we should know if this is a plus EV or minus EV spot for Villain. And in line 4, we make Villain react to our shove by removing his minus EV hands, meaning that we let him decide whether to call or fold with his kings. Then in line 5, we again compute, now with Villain having made his decision whether to call or fold. In line 6, we now store the EV for the shoving range in memory. The first field is the value for variable 1. The second field is the EV that we obtain at script checkpoint 1, which is the shove or fold EV. Then in line 7, we increase variable 1 by 5%. And in line 8, as long as the weight is 100% or below, we go back to line 2 and repeat the whole process for the new weight. In this manner, we'll get the EV performance for each weight for 7-6 suited at 5% intervals. At the end of the script, when variable 1 has exceeded 100%, we draw the graph of all the data points we've added. So let's just run the script. And here we are, going over all weights for 7-6 suited. And I'll just skip here. And here we are. In the graph, we can see that the worst performance is at 0%. So when we're just shoving aces, we'll make the least amount of money. Then we gradually make more as we increase the percentage of the time that we also shove 7-6 suited, thus exploiting the fact that Villain is folding anyway. The turnaround point is around 55% at which we're shoving 7-6 suited so often that Villain will now have a profitable call. And after that, the more we shove 7-6 suited, the less we make, since Villain will always call anyway and we're just adding to our losses by shoving more often. Now with a little math, it's actually possible to calculate the exact turnaround frequency at which the call with kings turns from minus EV to plus EV. I won't show the deduction here, I'll just fill it in. Let me leave this menu here. And now I'll right click 7-6 suited to edit the percentage, which is 51.8557. 
enter. And this is the absolute optimal solution for small blind to shove with so that he makes the largest amount of money versus a perfectly playing big blind who knows his strategy. A funny thing happens at this equilibrium point since if I compute and now mouse over villains kings, we'll see that at that point it performs at an EV of exactly zero. So for villain, no matter if he always calls or always folds, he always makes zero dollars in the event that we push. For what it's worth, he will make money in this pot, but it's from the times that we fold 7 6 suited and he gets the pot. Now let me just close this window here. Now when we mouse over small blind pushing range, we'll actually see that at the equilibrium range for small blind, 7 6 suited performs at minus EV. Now this is his true equilibrium range. However, it's Villain who decides whether the 7 6 suited hand is plus EV or minus EV. If he always calls, then 7 6 suited will be minus EV, and if he always folds, let me just uh, switch the fold and call action by clicking one and then the other, and recompute. Small blind now becomes plus EV. Now, whether Villain calls or folds does not affect the total EV of Small Blind's decision at all. It's 80.74 if Villain always folds, and let me switch them back and compute. It's 80.74 if he always calls. All that is affected is how much Aces makes and how much 7-6 suited makes. But if Big Blind wants 7-6 suited to perform below 0 EV, that's entirely his decision.